Hi, this is Mike from the Mobile Fanatics. I got the Nokia Lumia 920. I've already done a few videos on it. Here I just want to do a quick review of the software. As you can see, that's my start screen. I got the Christmas tree theme right now. That's actually my Christmas tree. I took the photo with the 920. So right now, we got, um, as you can see, one email came through just now. It'll show on the lock screen right there, one email. I could reposition that notification to be anywhere else. So right now I would have the first slot as my missed calls and voicemails. The second slot is messaging. And then I got this one over here all the way to the right for emails. I kind of wanted to have it separate. So I don't have to just be getting the icons mixed up. The messaging and the email icons look kind of similar. So I always know my emails are far off to the right. There's also a Facebook notification when I get an update that shows right there. So it'll slide the phone the screen up to reveal the home screen. And as you can see up here, I got four contacts. Um, if I tap one, it'll take me straight to their card where I can send them a text or call them or email them right on their Facebook wall, whatever you want to do. I could resize them. So if I tap my finger on it, there's three different sizes you could have. You could set this up however you want. You could have your contacts down the side, up the top, down towards the bottom. You know, you could reposition them to have a big one right in the middle and then put all your other contacts around it. But um, that's how I have my home screen right now. Spent quite a bit of time trying to customize it, lay it out how I think it's comfortable. I got my messaging. It's something I always do, messaging. Some people like a smaller one. Some people like the biggest one. If I'm always going to messaging, I'm just going to easily tap it. So, like the music player, I don't use it as much as messaging, so I made it smaller. Now, let's say I know I'm going to be driving. Um, I'm going to be listening to a lot of music. I want easy access to the music player. I'll blow it up. You know, just for that hour or whatever, so that I could easily access it. So you don't always have to have a static home screen. Just customize it based on what you're doing that day. If it's Sunday and I watch a lot of football, I want to keep track of my fantasy football team, I'll blow up the fantasy football um, home screen tile. You know, and I'll put it all the way at the top. And I'll put it next to the ESPN tile, which is also very informative, as you can see right there. I'll throw that up at the top. It shows the games that I choose. So coming down, I got the people tile. I got the me tile. I use rally often. A couple of bookmarks to the home uh, on the home, on the start screen that I use often. So it took the image from the website and made it the tile. And those are just web bookmarks right there. Got the internet tile, calendar, amazing weather app found in the Windows Phone store. Then I got the OneNote shortcut. I'm reading a book right now, Game of Thrones. I got that, so if I tap it, you know, it's, it's little things like this. It'll take me to the last page I was reading. And then I got the Facebook app and Words with Friends I'm playing right now. That'll show, if it's my turn, it'll show the little number up there of how many notifications I have within that game. Right now it's not my turn, so it doesn't show anything. My photos, I blew it up a little bit big. I got it further down the screen. I don't always need access to photos, but I made it the biggest size since I could easily tap on it. Then down here, I got a timer application, countdown timer, count up timer, traffic app, banking app, and then um, there's a list application I use for groceries or whatever kind of list I want to make. It syncs with Google, so that's cool Google tasks. If it's complete, I'll just wipe it off. If I, you know, I'm at the store, I got the vegetables, boom. We need paper towels, don't want to delete it, slide it back over here and it goes back up. That list I pinned to the home screen. You could also pin other lists to the home screen. Um, a couple RSS feeds right here. And of course, Nokia Drive Beta, the alarm tile, I made it kind of big because I use it you know, two or three times a day. I want to make it easy to grab. If you shrink it down real small, then you kind of have to pinpoint it. So. You could shrink it down smaller if you want. A couple of OneNote tiles. Updating these often takes me directly to a note. So that if I do have some likes about the Lumia 920 that I'm, you know, I use these for working on the article. Take it there and OneNote is awesome. You could drop photos into it, make lists, voice notes, whatever. And then down here I got the Starbucks card app so I could make a payment with my Starbucks card. Um and then I also have the NFL Fantasy app and down at the bottom I always keep those at the bottom because I use them 
not often, but I like them easy to access. I don't want them to see them all the time though, so I always know they're at the very bottom. Just go to the bottom, there's my settings, the Windows Phone Store, the official WordPress app, and Amazon Shopping. So the start screen, you know, you tailor it to what you do often, what you need. You, you know, like I told you earlier, if I'm gonna be driving all the time, I'm gonna bring the Nokia Drive all the way to the top and put it right next to the music player. So it just depends on what you do. And then, you know, of course you got the whole entire app list readily available to you. So you don't need to have everything on the home screen. If I want to listen to our iHeartRadio one day, I'll drop that on the home screen, blow it up, leave it there, take it off. I don't use it every day, so it's not on the home screen. Um, let me show you the settings real quick because there's a lot more settings in Windows Phone 8 than there are in Windows Phone 7. So right away, ringtones, theme. I'll show you all different themes. There's all the theme colors. I love the one I'm using right now. Um, if you want to get bright with everything, put it magenta, boom, you know. So it just depends on what you're feeling that day. I usually tend to use these colors here at the bottom more often. I don't like having a super bright home screen, so I'll just usually, you know, you could put it on this olive color. I think it looks great as well. Doesn't, you know, hurt your eyes. It's not too bright. Still stands out just enough. So the accents, you know, you go to your email, you can see that's unread. So you're going to see the accent right there that it's unread. It's green. All the other ones are white. That means they're red. Go back to the settings. Um, email and accounts, it's just like Windows 7. You know, you set up your Facebook, your Twitter right there is built in, all your email accounts, your calendars. I got Gmail syncing the calendar, Google Apps syncing a calendar, Facebook syncing another calendar, and it all works pretty darn good. Internet sharing, got that turned on right here. Uh, right now it's turned off. I could turn it on and share, I think it's five or maybe even eight devices. I use it all the time with my laptop. Lock screen, ton of options here. So at the, up at the top, photo. Right now I have it on a custom photo. If I want, it'll be, I could turn on Bing. It'll show a Bing random wallpapers. You know, just like you were to hit the search button. I think it's actually the same one. So if I hit the search button, that would be my wallpaper if I made it the lock screen. Um, I can make it CNN. Let me show you real quick. So right there, it's just showing the background. It hasn't pulled in any feeds yet, but if you give it a few minutes, it'll pull in the top news and show it down here, and it'll show a picture up here of what's going on you know, at CNN.com, the head latest headlines. Let's see if it'll update for you guys. I'm not sure how long it takes, actually. Um, Gleek is a Twitter app. It'll show the latest tweets that you have, the number of mentions, all that good stuff. Uh, Facebook. You'll put that on and it'll show your notifications. Let's see real quick. Yeah, this takes a little bit of time and this actually you configure. I have a lot of the settings turned off. So right here, you got this new option that says open app. And you have some configurations you could do right here. You know, you could have all albums showing in the background. And then there's there would be all your notifications. So you can make your home screen completely tailored to Facebook. <clears throat> I'd rather not do that. I'll keep it on my photo. Show artists when playing music. Let me show you what that looks like real quick. Play some music. Let's play something from Adele. Okay, so it's playing. Phone is locked. So there you go. It's going to show her picture in the background a picture of Adele let's say we play another artist as long as it has the album art you know usually Xbox does a great job Xbox music of pulling in the album artwork so here's the metal band that I listen to so the background here as you can see it just pulled in a segment of the album cover so that doesn't look too good I wish it would change to something else or know that there's nothing there, but you know, you can't pick and choose. Let's do another album that might be a little bit more noticeable. Uh, let's see. Let's check a Foo Fighters album. So let's say we start playing this album. 
There you go. So it you just literally saw it animate to that. So I noticed that sometimes it does animate to different parts of the album cover or the artist or you know different images related to that band. So that's pretty cool. Um, personally, I like it turned off. Let's go back to that setting. See, I got multitasking going on right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it shows eight when it's all said and done, but let's go back to the lock screen. Um, turn that off. Notification, choose an app to show detailed status. There you go, there's a update coming in for the ESPN app for the Lakers. I got that notification turned on. So whenever there's a news update, I'm gonna get notified right there from a toast. They call them toast in Windows Phone. Shoots across the top of the screen, I could touch it, it'll take me to the ESPN app. Back here, so right now I got it to show messaging on the home screen. Um, it'll show the first set, uh, five words or so of a text message that was recently sent to me. Here's all your options. Latest calendar entry will show instead, CNN, Facebook, that Gleek Twitter app, Linked inbox, um, your phone calls, and Skype. I have it on messaging because um, when I get a text message, I don't always want to have to open my phone to read it. I could change it to linked inbox or w whatever spec specific inbox you want, and it would show right here the latest email, the text of the subject line. So I'll send it back to messaging. I wish more third-party apps would take advantage of it. If Rowie were to get this implemented, that would be great. So I could see the latest replies. And a little bit further down, this is the row of actual number of missed whatever. So here I could show my linked inbox right here instead of all the way at the end. Or I could show my phone calls right here instead of over here. So that's actually going to show you know phone calls, messages, email. You can rearrange the positioning of them. So I like having my phone the first one, the messaging, and at the end, the email. I don't use Skype often. If you use games like Xbox Live or whatever, it'll let you know it's your turn on whatever game is linked up with Xbox. And that's it right there. Screen time's out. You got some options. I keep it on one minute. And then you could turn on a password to lock up your screen. So let's say 1212. Confirm your password. Done. Now every time I open the screen, it's going to ask me for the password. I turn that on sometimes um, if I'm going out to the mall or I'm at work or whatever. But when I'm at home for the day, I turn it off. It gets kind of annoying. <clears throat> but it's easy to turn on and off, so it's not a big deal. Let's go back to the settings. Keep going further down the list. We're almost done here actually with this video. We got 13 minutes. I gotta go a little bit further. Bluetooth, tap and send, that's for NFC. Airplane mode, of course. Cellular options, location, you can turn on or off. If you turn it off, nothing could access your GPS. I leave it on because I do need my apps to be able to access my location. Kids Corner, I'll show that demo in another video. It's not just for kids, it pretty much gives you a second home, sh home screen, which is pretty cool. Battery saver. You got some more options here than you do in Windows Phone. Um, if I turn it on, I mean, I'm sorry, you got more options than you do in Windows Phone 7. Here, Windows Phone 8, there's more options right there. It's a little bit different. I can't really remember what Windows Phone 7 looks like, but the, the setup, the layout is a little bit different. Turn it off. So right now I'll leave it on and I'll tell it to when battery is low to kick in. So right now my battery saver is not on. When it gets down to I think 20% it'll shut off or it'll turn on the battery saver which shuts off all your notifications and really does a great job of saving, extending your battery life. Phone storage, tap on that. It'll take you to show you what's on your, taking up the space on your phone. If you click on the drive, there you go. You can't really do much here. It's not a folder access or nothing like that. It just tells you what's on, how many, um, what the file size is for each type of files you're using. As you can see right there, I don't have much left on my free space. I used it up pretty good, and I'm actually wondering what other thing is taking up nine, almost ten gigabytes. That's saved for another article. 
something's eating my memory right now and I gotta check on that but here you can back up stuff to the cloud app list and settings it'll go to your SkyDrive text messages can be backed off and your photos auto upload on I love it so when I get home or when I'm on Wi-Fi I have it set up where it'll send all my photos and videos to the SkyDrive automatically yeah it's gonna eat your battery a little bit but when I get home anyways I set my phone on the wireless ch charging pad so it doesn't really matter this way I don't ever rarely have to plug my phone into the computer only basically when I want to add some music to it or something love that feature um, date and time brightness setting it's the same keyboard so basically everything else is is the same as here's some audio settings you got the equalizer so if I plug, plugged in some headphones, I'd be able to show you the equalizer. I don't have them near me, but basically you could control um, a lot of the different frequencies. And then it has presets you could also use, probably about 10 presets, like hip-hop, jazz, rock, uh, orchestra, etc. And then here's your Dolby surround sound setting. It basically makes it feel like when you turn this on, you have headphones in. It makes it feel like you're listening to music live in a club or at a concert. It sounds really good. It's just going to give you a slightly different experience than um, just turning it off. Display and touch. Here you could turn off the sensitivity, the ultra sensitive screen that it's a new feature that Nokia in, you know introduced um, in collaboration with Synaptics. Turn it off. I usually keep it off. You know I turn it on and it's extremely sensitive. So I'll you know I'm browsing through a web page and I'll go to highlight something and it'll flick around because it almost feels like it picks up your touch before you even touch the screen. But if I'm wearing gloves, I'll turn it back on. Or if my hands are dirty and I don't want to touch the screen with my fingers, I could use my nails. So I'll show you real quick. So I'm using the back of my nail. You kind of got to give it a little bit of push, but it works. You know, I could set an alarm. Turn on an alarm. It definitely works though, um, pretty good. If I, you know, I could, I could even type pretty good with the back of my nail. So if my hands, like I said, I work outside, my hands get dirty, and I just need to check a message real quick, see what someone said or whatever, I'm just gonna flick around real quick using the back of my nail. <clears throat> so that could be turned off though. A lot of people worried it couldn't. It could be turned off. I turn it off most of the time. Um, you connect your Nokia account here. A lot of old school Nokia users would like to do that. Um, Network Plus Advanced Settings. So here it's going to show you like the um, call waiting and the character set. Extras and info. It's just going to let you know about your firmware, what type of phone you have. You know, stuff you don't really need to know unless you have a problem with your phone you need to call in. So that's it basically for the start screen and the settings took me almost 20 minutes to show you all of it but um, like I said I love the features of this thing it's, it's an easy phone to use it's a lot more customizable than previous versions of Windows Phone basically because you could resize the tiles um, Windows Phone 7.8 is coming so the older Windows phones are going to be able to have this resizable tile and new colors as well and that's about it that I could show you right now um, if you have any more questions, let me show you real quick actually the photos. This also is new. Here's some photos I took last night when we were decorating the Christmas tree. If I want to mark multiple, you would just tap that thing on the bottom. And now everything's, you know, you can see those little check marks. So then I could have options to send those photos to SkyDrive. I could share them, I could delete them, I could favorite them. So I have some options to send multiple photos now. That wasn't there in previous versions of Windows Phone either. If you have any questions, you want me to cover something else in another video, let me know in the comments or shoot me an email, tweet me at Mike Macias on Twitter. And that's my review of the software for the Nokia Lumia 920. Stay tuned for more coverage on this phone and Windows Phone. And thanks for watching.